This is the 2023 Lexus LC500 convertible, and it seems very ignorant of the state of the automotive industry. While the trends of today talk about hybridization, turbochargers, and SUVs, the LC500 is unapologetically a convertible with a 5-liter naturally aspirated V8. So what's it like to drive this blast from the past in 2023? In a word, spectacular, and half of that is to do with this car's engine. Not only does this 5-liter naturally aspirated V8 make 471 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque, which is enough to push the car to 60 in 4.7 seconds, but it's also one of the best-sounding engines on sale today. <laughs> And the second thing that makes this car so spectacular to drive is how it looks. In my opinion, this is one of the best looking cars on sale today. And even in this rather dull gray color, this car attracts the amount of attention that would make a car two or three times as expensive as this vehicle very envious. So it sounds amazing and looks great, but that's not all you're going to need a car to do. There are four seat belts in the LC500 convertible. Let's check out the back seats. You know, this would be a good car for homecoming because there's a rather flat area behind the rear seats that you could sit on in the homecoming parade. Um, you might want to put something down so that your feet, your shoes don't cover, get all over the leather. But sitting back here, it's very upright very cramped your seat belts in the middle the rcf track edition that i had two weeks ago definitely had bigger back seats than this lc500 convertible but this thing looks and sounds better so could be worth and once you get over how hilariously small the back seats are you can appreciate how hilariously small the trunk is it's less than a foot deep so paper grocery bags will not fit nor more importantly will a set of golf clubs which i think could be detrimental to some prospective buyers of this car. All right, driving the Lexus LC500 convertible. So the sound and the looks, which I mentioned earlier, are still the dominant things you notice when driving this car. This engine just, oh, it's so symphonic. It is absolutely beautiful to listen to and just makes you wanna floor it all day long. But this car does excel in other areas. The suspension is very floaty, which is what you would want in a Grand Tourer car. I've been driving mostly in normal mode, and in this mode, the car just floats down the road, and it's a relatively comfortable vehicle. Now, these 21-inch rims do let in a little bit of the imperfections in the road, so you will feel jolts and jarring impacts in that capacity, but the suspension itself is good. There are different rim sizes, I believe, that you can get in the LC500, so a smaller size with a little more uh, of a tire sidewall would help the ride a little bit. I'm also impressed the steering is very direct. This is a heavy car, so you do definitely feel the weight when you are throwing it around a corner, but the steering is fast and direct, and when you put it into Sport S Plus mode, which is the most aggressive mode that this LC500 has, uh, it gets a little heavier, which is nice. You get a little weight as you're throwing it around a corner and gives you a little more feeling. The LC500 convertible only comes with a 10-speed automatic transmission, and it sometimes can get confused Confused as to what gear it, it should be in, but when you put your foot down, especially in Sport S Plus, the upshift sound beautiful and is another reason why you just want to floor this car all day long. Um, but sometimes it is confused and it will struggle to find the right gear. Um, it's not always the smoothest. It, that doesn't happen all the time for the most part. You don't notice the transmission, but there's just been a few times where I put my foot down and it takes a second to give you the power. Lexus set out with this car to make a Grand Tour. It doesn't have any F badges on it, so they weren't intending for it to be a sporty canyon carving machine. They wanted it just to be something that you could comfortably cruise down the road for miles in. You can have a blast in this car, but it's not about performance. It's not about lap times. It's just about the vibe, essentially. And in that regard, I think they did a really good job. This 5-liter V8 obviously sounds spectacular. It makes 471 horsepower, 398 pound-feet of torque. That is plenty of power to move this car with a speed that you can really enjoy, and you're going to be enjoying that sound. So it doesn't even need to be that fast, because the slower it goes, the longer you get to hear it accelerating. And the Grand Tourer vibes continue on the inside, where this interior is just so elegant. Everything is sculpted, and everything is really designed in a very unique way 
I think this is one of the first cars where Lexus really wasn't just trying to be the Germans and beat the Germans at their own game. They really kind of found their own flowing design language, especially with these door handles, these grab handles, and everything just kind of flows together in a way that no other car really has an interior like this, but it is still very elegant and definitely feels upscale. Now, the main qualm I have with this car and that I've had with this car since it came out is that there isn't a touchscreen. The infotainment system is controlled by this touchpad, which is just pretty difficult to use and uh, finicky and while driving, it can be really distracting. But this is a 2023 model year car. For 2024, Lexus will finally be adding a touchscreen. The screen will be brought forward, so it won't be as well integrated into the dashboard as this current infotainment system is, but at least it will be a lot easier to use. People won't have to mess around with this trackpad, and I'm very happy that they're making that update because that is my main concern with the LC500 as a car. Now, my other concern with the LC500 is that this is a Grand Tourer, as I've said, so you're supposed to be able to go on long road trips and see the entire country and just have a great time and be able to spend long times in this car. However, this isn't a very practical interior. There's plenty of space for me as six foot two as a driver, but then when I'd wanna store my things and maybe other people, it starts to go downhill pretty fast. There is a singular cup holder in the front of the center console, which is fine. The door bins are pretty small. You couldn't fit another cup in there. You can slide the center console back to reveal a space where you could put another cup if you wanted, but then you don't really have an armrest on your inboard side so you're left kind of uncomfortable in that regard. So if you slide that closed, then you can't fit another cup. I found that I can put my phone upright in that slot and slide it closed and have my phone pinched by it and still have an armrest, but that's a little annoying. And then to open the center console, you have to push it all the way into its open position and then pull this lever and it opens sideways and anything you need to grab is rather at a rather awkward position. And it's not that big, so you could store your keys in there, but not much else. And then the back seats themselves are very small. With the top down, you can squeeze people in back there, but there's barely any headroom when the top is up. So it really is reserved for children. And even if you do put the top down, adults are going to be very cramped because there's like next to no leg room so then the front seat passengers have to move up and everyone is just pretty uncomfortable if there's anyone sitting in the back and you're going to need to use the back seats for storage because the trunk itself is very very small so you're not going to be able to fit a lot back there you might be able to fit one carry-on suitcase but you're gonna have to put the other in the back seat. So the limited storage of this car kind of hampers its grand touring vibes. I think the coupe version, which I haven't had a chance to drive yet, probably has a little more storage, especially in the trunk because this convertible top folds away into the, what is part of the trunk, but no longer. But wait, I wanna floor it. But then all your worries about this car just fade away when you get to do something like that. But other than the storage, this car is very comfortable to drive. The suspension is good. The seats are very comfortable. They don't massage, which you might want on a $113,000 car. Lexus doesn't offer it on this vehicle, but you do get Lexus's climate concierge, which will keep you warm no matter if you have the top up or down or cool if it's a hot day. It will blow air on your neck. It'll adjust your heated and cooled seats. It'll adjust your heated steering wheel and all of that to make sure that you remain comfortable and at the temperature you have set regardless of if the top is up or down. And the best part about driving the Lexus LC500 is it does have a sense of occasion to it. It's such a large car on the outside. It is so incredibly elegant. You are more captaining a vessel down the road than you are just driving a car. You know, a lot about driving cars is perspective and what cars you are used to driving. And I got into this LC500 convertible after spending a week in a Mazda MX-5 Miata. So that car is so, so tiny, especially compared to this. So this feels like a land yacht. And I think most people will have that feeling with this car, especially for really just having two seats and such little cargo space. It's funny in a way that it has such a big proportions on the outside, but that just gives it a feeling of captaining and being an incredibly large vehicle. And that brings about that sense of occasion that I really do appreciate in this car. This car is an experience to drive as I lose traction accelerating uphill. 
You're not just going for a drive in the LC500. This car will give you the ride of your life every time you get in it, even if you're just running errands or going for a short drive. It's so spectacularly fun. It puts a smile on your face. The sound of that engine, the scale of this car, and everyone looks at you. It is not a subtle vehicle at all. It attracts attention in a way almost no other car I've driven has done. It's really impressive that this vehicle, a Lexus, can attract so much attention, but people can just tell it's special. It looks so cool. It looks like a concept car. It's very comfortable in here. And I'm just so glad that Lexus made a car like this. And as I'm cruising at 62 miles an hour down this road, on a rather windy day, it's pretty quiet in here. Lexus did a great job with the sound detonating, especially with this soft top convertible top. You really don't feel hear a lot of road noise or wind noise in this car. And uh, it feels very well engineered, every part of this. The controls, these aluminum paddle shifters, this buttery smooth volume knob, these grab handles, the door handles, everything just feels really luxurious and it's all designed in that very unique Lexus way that sets this car apart from even the other competition like a BMW M850i or a Mercedes SL55 AMG. Not only is this car cheaper than those vehicles, but it's also way more unique and has a naturally aspirated V8 where those cars have twin turbo V8s. But this car is best at coming around a corner and flooring it. <sighs> what an incredible car. And I can't wait for it to have a touchscreen because then it'll be almost perfect. So that's the 2023 Lexus LC500 convertible. This is my third time spending a week with this vehicle over the past three years. And every time I've driven it, I've just appreciated it more and more. And I think that's because this is a dying breed of car. There are so few convertibles on sale today and so few naturally aspirated V8s on sale today, and they're only gonna get fewer and further in between. But I've also continued to appreciate this car just because it is, by itself, a really good car. The sounds it makes, the joy I get while driving it, and its looks have continued to blow me away. And, its biggest issue, it's hard to use infotainment system, is getting replaced in 2024, so I cannot wait to spend another week with this car next year. Thanks for watching, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.